Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. This video, we're going to be talking about three technologies that, oh freak, almost fell over there. We're gonna be talking about three technologies that have the potential to change the world. Now, if you're here, I'm assuming you have some software development experience, or maybe you're interested in coding and just need a little bit more information on where to get started. Well, throughout your career, you're going to have lots of opportunities to both work on software projects that interest you, but also software projects that have the opportunity to impact others and make this world a better place. Because of that, my goal here is to introduce you to the technologies you might need to bring your ideas into an actual product. Now, I am partnering with IBM and the Call for Code Global Initiative, which is basically an initiative to help impact the world in a positive way in specifically natural disasters. And this year's focus is on the health of individuals and the community. So the challenge is, can you build software that can help people in times of natural disaster Maybe it's helping the people's health, or maybe it's helping first responders get to people easier. Whatever it might be, there's all kinds of opportunities. So hopefully by the end of this video, you have a better understanding of some of the technology you might use in times of natural disaster. Now, the first one I want to talk about is blockchain. Now, I'm going to be covering a lot in this video, so I'll try to explain these as best as possible without going in a ton of detail. If you want all the details, you can do some additional research. So what is blockchain? While looking on the internet, you might get all kinds of confusing definitions and you might be a little bit confused. So I'm gonna start with a simple definition and then we'll go into a little bit more complex examples. So put simply, blockchain is just a type of database. Now that might be a bit of a stretch, but the purpose of blockchain is no different than any other database out there, whether it's MySQL or MongoDB or any other database you may have worked with. The purpose is that it stores information. Now the way blockchain stores information is different than the other databases you've worked with. So blockchain is a distributed infrastructure. Blockchain allows us to store information safely across numerous nodes or computers in this distributed network. We have numerous nodes and all of the information is on these nodes. The benefit here is that there's not one point of failure. We don't have to rely on this system being perfect. So in the situation of a natural disaster, we are less likely to lose data, for example, because the system is much more resilient. This also helps with security because we don't have one centralized location of power or control. Rather, the control is distributed across all these nodes. So in order to change things in this blockchain, there has to be a consensus among these nodes to basically say, yeah, I agree to make this change. And when these nodes agree, then the data is committed to the blockchain. Now the actual way the data is structured inside of a blockchain matches the name perfectly. It's literally a chain of blocks. So each block in this chain contains a sequence of changes to this blockchain or things that we want to append to the chain. And when you look at the chain in its entirety, it's essentially the entire history of everything we've added to this blockchain. Now generally, you don't really delete stuff from a blockchain, so it's a permanent structure, so we can only append data to this thing. And there's going to be a permanent record of all of these changes in what's known as a public ledger. Now, blockchain is often associated with cryptocurrencies. So Bitcoin or whatever other cryptocurrency you might be working with. And it's really easy to think about how a blockchain works when you're talking about cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies are just digital currency. So if I have some digital currency and I want to transfer some to you, a, a record inside of this blockchain will basically say where the, the cryptocurrency is coming from, where it's going, and how much is being transferred. And this information is anonymous. So rather than having my name or my address or whatever, it's just going to have my public key and your public key and it's basically just going to show that transfer from one person to another. So that is the foundation of how a blockchain works. But the true benefit of blockchains when it comes to natural disasters is really its resiliency because it's not going to have a fall at one particular node. That's not going to be able to break the blockchain. The other thing is when it comes to security, there's not one centralized location of power and any changes to this blockchain must be agreed upon by the nodes. So therefore the data is much more trustworthy. So these are all important things when it comes to natural disasters because we want to create things that are going to persist even in times of destruction. And it's not something we want people to be able to tinker with or hack or basically 
throw the integrity of our data into question. So blockchains are often used to basically track the lifetime of some item. So often this is for supply chains, taking an item from production all the way to its delivery. That's an example of a use for blockchain. Obviously the other one is cryptocurrency, which we talked about, and there are tremendous uses of blockchain and it's probably going to be one of the, the, foundation, the foundational building blocks of a lot of upcoming technology. Now the next thing I wanted to talk about is IOT. This stands for Internet of Things. Now when you say IOT, the general person might think of IOT as smart teddy bears and my, my new digital fridge where I can check my Facebook account or whatever it is. But that's not exactly the IOT that I'm talking about. Although those things might be super useful and everybody needs the latest digital tracking toothbrush that'll tell you your brushing patterns, the IOT that I'm talking about is more sensors um, around natural disasters in this scenario that can be used to basically predict issues or to tell us of issues where there might not be an actual person monitoring something. So try not to think of the smart toys and stuff and think more of sensors. So a sensor is just something that's going to monitor something for us and regularly give us some data. When we take all this data from a bunch of sensors, we can get a really good view of the state of a particular area. Now this is probably a terrible example, but something I always think of when I think of these sensors is that each sensor is going to give a new perspective of whatever we are looking at. And in this one movie, The Dark Knight, <laughs> the Batman movie, there's a part where he basically takes all of the, the sensors on people's cellular devices or whatever technology they have, and he's basically able to generate a 3D view of the city where he can literally walk through walls or whatever with his vision. <laughs> if you haven't seen the movie, I probably sound like totally crazy, but if you've seen the movie, you might know what I'm talking about. And although that's really Hollywoodified and it really isn't how it works, <laughs> it is a good illustration. By getting enough data, we can have basically this supernatural view of what we're trying to look at or what we're trying to analyze. Now, obviously, if we're dealing with a natural disaster, it's not always easy just to send some people in there to put sensors everywhere. This is the kind of stuff that we want to be able to do remotely, safely, and usually before the natural disasters actually happen. Fortunately, there are data sets out there that we can take advantage of that use IoT or IoT-like technologies to basically give us a continuous stream of data that we can use in our applications. So a really big one is NASA's data set. It's called NASA's Earth Observation Data, and basically this is a data set that will look at the Earth in numerous different ways where you can get information like ozone data and weather data and all kinds of other data that uh, I probably don't even understand what half of it is. And this data is delivered regularly and if you get enough of this data, you can start doing advanced analytics on this data to make predictions on what kind of things are gonna happen or to analyze weather patterns or dangers or whatever it might be. Now, the next thing I wanted to talk about, the third technology is AI or artificial intelligence. Now, I was struggling what to name this third one. Should it be AI or should it be machine learning or data science? And these are very similar, but not all the same thing. So AI is kind of like the goal. We're trying to have artificial intelligence. Machine learning is one technique to how we can get there. We can use machine learning to reach AI. Data science is more like the practice of doing these things. So we might do AI techniques as a data scientist, and basically as a data scientist, we're going to analyze this data. So all of these three things are very similar, but not entirely the same thing but they're all going to be useful when it comes to natural disasters and helping people in need. So this is closely tied to blockchain and IoT because these are both sources of data. Blockchain is going to be a way for us to store data. IoT is a way for us to generate data. And AI is basically the step when we take all this data and we analyze it and use it to make predictions and automations. So automations is when we basically have a computer system do something for us. So a computer could analyze weather patterns or analyze health data and basically flag if there's some kind of issue or something we should look out for. It can basically be a screening process that can be automated to help us be um, one step ahead of any kind of natural disasters or disease outbreaks. 
So that is the automation part. It's basically making the computer do stuff much better than us, much more efficiently, much faster. The next part is prediction, and this is where AI shines because with AI we can do predictive modeling using this data to basically make a guess about what kind of thing is going to happen in the future. We can look at all of the sensor data and we can predict which areas are going to be in need, extra need of help, or what kind of potential health needs are going to be needed in, a, in an emergency situation, and so forth. So to conclude, our three technologies that I mentioned were blockchain, IoT, and AI. Now, just to warn you guys, I'm not an expert on any of these. I gave you the basic information, <laughs> and I made it seem very easy, but this stuff is very challenging and it can take a while to actually make useful technology using these three technologies. So to help, IBM has a series of code patterns where it's going to take you through common examples of how these three technologies can be used to solve particular problems. So if you want to get some hands-on experience and start figuring out how you can help in natural disasters, go check out these code patterns and get your hands on with these technologies. All of these things are made possible with the software available in the IBM cloud. You can go check all that information out and I'll have resources for you guys in the description. I also wrote a blog with all this information if you want to have it in reading form. <laughs> now you might be watching this far in the future, but if you're watching it before the deadline, the deadline for any submissions for the Call for Code Challenge is July 29th of 2019. Now, if you do manage to create something pretty awesome, there are numerous winning positions, but just so you guys know, the, the winner, the number one winner, <laughs> will get $200,000 as well as a lot of assistance in bringing their project into actual execution. So if you want to actually, once you have some useful software, some useful technology, if you want the help to, to use this inside of situations where there are natural disasters, you will get the help you need to do that. There are also numerous other runner-ups and you can work in teams if you want. So if you have someone you wanna partner with that might be good at one particular thing, you can do that to come up with the best solution possible. So if you wanna see all of the information and all the rules and if you wanna go sign up, links in the description. Do this because it's going to one, help you learn, it's gonna help you get some experience with these technologies. And the other thing is that if you do this challenge, you're going to be putting your time into creating software that's going to help the world. And the third thing is, of course, this is going to help your resume. If you're able to even submit a project, that'll help your resume. But if you're able to actually get one of the winning positions, that's going to be a, an achievement that you'll never forget and you'll be thankful that you did it. So let me know what you guys think. What are some other technologies that you can use to help in the times of natural disasters and, and specifically when it comes to the health of individuals and of the community or healthcare or whatever it might be? Let me know in the comments section below. Really appreciate it, and we'll try to get some discussions going. Thank you guys for watching this video, and hopefully it was helpful. Now, I know I didn't write much on the chalkboard. I was planning on it, but maybe next time. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video, and yeah, don't forget to check out the resources in the description. Peace out. Oh, and subscribe.